Okay, so today's pepper review is going to be on the Star of Turkey Pepper. Alright, so let's take a closer look at the Star of Turkey, the plant anyway. And so... It's a, these plants can get as big as three feet. I've had them get really big. As you can see, this one was grown under a lot of shade. So it really didn't get that big, but I wasn't growing for size or anything. I just kind of wanted to get a couple peppers off it for next year and do a review on it. And hopefully I'll grow one or two of these next year and I'll get them nice and big. But I wasn't looking for size or anything this year. And plus I was limited on space and everything. So... I figured I would just keep it in this corner, let it do what it's got to do, because sometimes you'll plant these peppers in a area that you think is not going to do good, and they'll just start growing two, three feet. You know, I mean, they, they like partial shade, so it, it's really a hit and miss. Sometimes it, it kind of works that way, sometimes it doesn't. So let's take a look at the profile of the leaf. This is, we're in, uh, we're past the middle of October. So we're kind of going into November right now. I'm actually kind of shocked that I'm still able to do these reviews. I've been behind on the reviews. I actually have almost 60 or 70 more varieties to review. And I don't think I'm going to make it this year to do them all. Just been too busy and a lot of things going on. So um, I'm trying to get these in as much as I can. And we're doing these hot pepper reviews is a lot more difficult to do than sweet peppers because you could only eat so many of these in in a day. I can only do at best maybe three reviews in a day with hot peppers. And that's it. Any more than that, and I'm gonna have problems. So I, I don't go any more than that. It's a it's a lot, and especially when you're doing them every day. So it, it gets to be you know quite wearing on you. It kind of wears you out. So anyway, as far as the leaf goes, it's generally a regular leaf type of plant. It does have like a, this plant, it's kind of weird. It, the feel of the leaf is a little weird. It kind of almost feels fuzzy a little bit. It very slightly has like a, a funny fuzziness to it. It's a regular leaf, but sometimes you'll notice with this particular variety, you'll notice that the leaves will want to get puffy a little bit. But it's not a broad leaf because you can see by the back over here that how the leaves kind of, they're not really bulging out like, you know, lobed. It's kind of like smooth, but it's yet it's large. That's what makes me say a regular leaf. Now, again, this this is not like a scientific thing. This is just my interpretation of what I'm actually viewing. So I try to give you an idea of what to look for when you buy the seeds. So you kind of want to look for these attributes and make sure that you got the right seeds. Because I would almost say at this point right now, 40% of the seeds that I receive are not what I bought. So I need to be able to identify that. And now I'm sharing that with you. So, yeah, like I say, it's a regular leaf. It does have a little bit of different feeling to it. It's not like a waxy or paper plastic feel to it. It's kind of fuzzy a little bit, but just lumpy and fuzzy and... It's kind of weird. It's a little different. So you got to look for that. It's not just a regular uh, pepper plant type of leaf, but it is a regular pepper leaf shape and type. Uh, the stem is very slightly raspy. It's not waxy smooth. There is virtually no purpling in the stem at all anywhere on this plant. Maybe at the very top, it just started getting a little tiny bit up there. And that might be because you know, we're starting to see temperatures now down in the low 30s upper 20s so we have gotten one or two days already that were frost but being i'm in the greenhouse it's protecting it but it still gets colder in here at night than it's been in you know since it's since they've been growing so now they're starting to feel that little colder so that a lot of times you'll see purpling on the very tops of the plants that's a lot of time from the sun you know going back and the colder temperatures coming in so you will catch that from time to time there's no flowers on a plant, unfortunately. I don't have, like, there's four of, these are all four of these plants are from the same batch of seeds. And these were grown from the seed packets that I grew, so these aren't like F1s or 2s or anything. These are actually from the seed packets, so that might be another reason why they're kind of smaller, too, because they're not climatized seeds. Now, had I grown 
seed from peppers I harvested last year, I would have, these plants may have been a lot bigger and more productive. So these are from first year grow, if you want to call it. Even though I've been growing it for several years now. And uh, I think that's it. There's no flowers. I can't show you really anything else. And uh, there's not much else to go on on this one. So let's pick this one. Oh, you can see there's like maybe... It goes anywhere from two peppers to a single pepper per node. Like this one's got two on it. That's not very common, but you do see it on this plant. So I'll pop that one off. Let's get you in some sunlight. If I can... So, that's what it looks like. And these do generally form a much better shape. Let me see, I'll pick another one or two. These actually all got to come off anyway, so I got to bring all these in. Like I said, we're getting temperatures now in the freezing. I'm really pushing it because if it does freeze in here, literally, whatever's on the plant will literally be, like, basically rotten. Basic. Not rotten, but, like, frozen and then thawed out and... You you have to harvest everything all at once and get the seeds out of it because you're really not going to eat it. So you gotta you gotta act fast. So I really need to start getting these peppers off these plants. It's just so many of them. I grew actually too many. So here's a bunch of them anyway. And here's a this is like probably the best shaped one that actually formed the best shape on it for what it should look like. Because if you look at the bottom of it, it only looks like three lobes. But it really should look like a star. It should be like three lobes, but in, in the middle of each lobe should be an indentation. So when you look at it down from here, from the top, it should look like there's all these little wrinkles and ripples all the way around it. And that's what the uh, Star of Turkey, I believe that's what it's called. I'll put the correct name in the description and everything and that way you know what to look for when you go to buy seeds all right so let's turn you around and give it a go all right so here's the star of turkey and i remember eating this last year and it was pretty hot i just don't remember how hot uh, i grow so many peppers that i don't even remember what they are from year to year i know i've grown it and i've now i've eaten it i just don't remember that much about it in fact Unfortunately, last year, because I was running late and trying to get things harvested and cleaned up and everything, I didn't really save any pepper seeds from it last year. So I don't really believe, I, I think I had picked a few of these and I put them on a plate and I left them in my garage and I forgot them and they get moldy on the inside. S seeds are shot at that point. So unfortunately, I didn't save any seeds from this last year. But I did taste test it, and I do remember it. I don't, I don't even know if I got a video on it, uh, to be honest with you, because I was just too busy last year, and I just really didn't have time to uh, shoot the video. And in some cases, I did shoot a lot of videos last year of the taste test, but unfortunately, I lost the videos. I just deleted them somewhere along the line. I just emptied files, and they were in it, and... So I, I don't have it. So this is almost an official first for this year, but I have grown it. I have taste tested it. It is hot, and we're going to give it a bite right now and make sure there's no spider webs on it. All right, so let's give it a bite. One last look. That's what you want to see. Let's start with the fact that we'll go to the taste first. The heat, I'm going to let the heat build. The taste had like a slightly fruity taste. These peppers are very ripe. They've been sitting like that on the plant for several months, maybe two months, already red. So they've been on there a while. But the taste is very mild. It's nice and fruity. And it also has like a cayenne type of a flavor that hangs out in the back of your tongue. I like that effect when it comes to peppers. Because when I cook with peppers, I want to bring that sensation to the palate when I'm creating a food combination for somebody, if I'm cooking for myself or somebody else, I'm looking for that effect. And when you eat it with other food, you don't notice it, but it's there. And that effect is really what brings out a lot of flavors in food. So this is that type of pepper that hangs around in the very back of your tongue. It's a very nice tasting pepper. It was a little fruity to begin with, but that subsided. And then I got that peppery cane type flavor it's just not fruity i don't know what you want to call it but i got that nice flavor hung out in the back of the tongue shortly afterwards 
and it's very nice on the palate. It's a very pleasant effect and a very pleasant um, taste. As far as the heat goes, it's not a very hot pepper. I'd say 2000 at best, if that. It was like a, a general type of warmness all the way around the mouth. It kind of heated up around the roof a little bit, heated up around the tongue, a little bit under the tip of the tongue, going towards the under the tip of the tongue. Nothing you can't handle. Believe me, I first thing I do is I wait to see if I start getting hiccups before I swallow it. I'll swallow the saliva a little bit first. If I start getting hiccups, then I know that it's just going to be a hard, hardcore experience. This was nothing like that. It was a little bit of heat, came in, it was very pleasant. It's a weird kind of a heat though. It's kind of like putting a mouthful of black pepper in your mouth. Now black pepper is not capsaicin, it's pepperine. That's part of the effect of why black pepper burns your mouth. Black pepper also has, under a microscope, also has these little hooks. And these hooks also give you a burning effect. And that's really not good for your digestive tract. But this gave me the effect like a pepperine type of uh, burning instead of a capsaicin burning. Just so you know. So you, so you kind of relate to what I'm talking about. It's kind of like black pepper almost. But it didn't taste like black pepper. It, it tastes like, like almost like cane and habanero mixed a little bit. Kind of had a nice interesting contrast. But the effect, the heat was like a black pepper burn. I don't know any other, other way to put it. It was very mild. But if you, if you eat enough black pepper, like a mouthful of it, yeah, you're going to get burned. You're going to feel that. So this was kind of like that a little bit. It was like a strong dose of black pepper, so to speak. But it was nice. It just hit those heat regions. Heat came down already. It's very nice. I still have part of it here. I'll take another small bite. Again, I just tasted it again. It has a very mild fruity flavor, but there is a little bit of that fruitiness. Maybe just a slight bit of sweetness, very slightly, because it's really ripe, so it started sweetening up a little. Outside of that, it's very pleasant pepper i mean i don't know what else to say about the taste it tastes like a nice pepper it's nothing awkward about it you could munch these down all day long they are a little warm so for people who aren't generally used to heat they'll probably be a little stronger for you but experiment with them very slowly see how your body reacts to them i just ate this one pepper i could probably eat another one or two right now without overdoing it like my digestive tract Without overdoing it, I could probably get away with one or two more of those. It wasn't that difficult. Like I said, heat-wise, I would say probably maximum 2,000. This particular one was probably around 1,100, something like that. I would say maximum 2,000. They may get a little hotter than that. I don't really know enough about them. But this was mild this year. Very pleasant tasting, very pleasant heat. So, All right, so that was your pepper review for the Star of Turkey. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.